Welcome to the complete collection of LeBron James' greatest stories told by NBA players and legends part number 3. This is a three part series so if you have missed the first two episodes of this series there is a playlist link in the description box down below that not only has this three part series but also all the other players within the entire series. Without further ado, these episodes take me a long time to edit and produce, so if you could quickly hit that like button before the video begins, that would be incredible. Subscribe if you are new and you enjoy NBA content, and hit that notification button so you stay notified when a new episode drops. I won't keep you waiting. Welcome to the complete collection of LeBron James' greatest stories told by NBA players and legends, part three. LeBron James is by far our best player in this league. I don't, think, I don't think there's really anyone next to him. I think he's there, then you go down the list. You know, Brian is, you know, my, my GOAT. Is he? Oh, let's talk about that. The numbers don't lie. He's right there. He's probably ahead of Jordan. I get asked all the time about, you know, MJ, LeBron, and, and it's such a difficult question to ask. All I know is they're the two, two best players that I've ever witnessed. You put Magic and Scotty and Penny Hardaway. No, you have to put Jordan and Magic together. And Penny Hardaway. And then you get LeBron. And that's every day, like every day, um, that you're totally focused on this. And he's gone past that eight straight times. It's ridiculous. LeBron is not as good as Michael Jordan? Come on. What do you think? LeBron is in a class by himself. You know, Brian is, you know, my, my GOAT. Is he? Oh, let's talk about that. So you got, give me your top three. Brian, Mike, probably like Shaq. Brian is the best player because I feel like, just because you talk about the best basketball player, not the best killer instinct. You understand what I'm saying? The fact that he can play all five positions, the fact that he's done this shit for 17 years consistently, no drop off at any, at any time. time. And we've been saying, well, not we. You can decide, media, you, you big teething right now, like you really feeling this. But I'm <laughs> saying, <laughs> he's, he's the, the best all around player of all he's, time. He's, he's not far. Oh, yeah, there's no question. All right, do me I'll one. give him that. Scotty Pippen, you would know better than anyone. How close is LeBron to catching Jordan? The numbers don't lie. Mm. He's right there. He's probably ahead of Jordan. Oh my oh! God! Oh! 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 I don't want to throw this water on you. Michael Jordan is probably the greatest scorer to ever play in the game. But I may go as far as to say LeBron James may be the greatest player to ever play the game because he's so potent offensively not, that not only can he score at will, but he keeps everybody involved. And you have to be on your P's and Q's on defense because uh, no guy on the basketball court is not a threat to score when LeBron James is out there. I saw there was this big debate on Twitter about Kobe versus LeBron, who was a better, Ooh, I guess, a technical man. player. Better skilled player. Skill, yeah, skilled skill player. LeBron better skilled, but Kobe's a better player to me. Uh, I think, no, I think, I think Kobe I think. better skilled, okay. and I think uh, LeBron a better player. Really? Just overall, yeah. Just because Ooh. just because LeBron just his ability, right, to play with anybody. And make I think anybody LeBron, better. I think dog. LeBron is a better skilled player. Cause he could do more. You know, he a better passer than Kobe. He a better rebounder. I mean, he's ambidextrous. He could use either hand. True. He jumped just as high as Kobe. And his if footwork. If, I mean his footwork. I think Kobe foot. I think Kobe you'll never see. Work. But the thing is, think about this. We seen Kobe before, or we seen Jordan, yep. who Kobe emulated. Yep. We haven't seen him. We never seen like a LeBron. LeBron. No, for Magic sure. Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Nah. As great as I think Kobe Bryant is, I never said he's not as good as Michael Jordan. Man, this guy LeBron James. Uh, you, you think he could be better than Michael? I do think he. Uh, I thought, and I'll I thought throw this water on you no, right now. No, no, listen. <laughs> I'm electrocute you twice Kenny, tonight. Kenny, Kenny, listen. I, I always look at guys from my era. Like I thought, I would never compare somebody to Michael Jordan, but this guy, LeBron James, from a, a basketball, like he does everything well. There's always been a player who you can compare somebody to. LeBron James is the first player 
that I've never seen another player that I could compare to. You know, there's always been six, eight guys who were super talented, who were terrific players, but they all weighed like 220, 30 pounds. I don't think we've ever had a guy, uh, you know, who, you know, Tracy, uh, Scotty Pippen, who are all guys, six, seven, six, eight, great defenders, great scores, very athletic. But LeBron outweighed those guys by 30 pounds. And I, I, we talk about it all the time, like, ooh, man, who, this is a freak of nature. Like, he does everything well. He, like, he what, did, what didn't Michael do well? He, he, Michael did everything well. LeBron James just bigger, stronger, faster. That's the only difference. But Mike, I said, Michael Jordan always said, Michael Jordan had the, the perfect body, 6'6", 225. Can I run, I'll jump, tough, everything? I said, this other guy's 6'8", 260. I mean, we've never had a guy. Like, you, you mentioned Scotty. Scotty, yeah, Scotty could go at a point guard, but Scotty was 6'7", 220. This other guy is 6'8", 260. He guards power forward. He plays power forward. I mean, this guy has the most unique body set. It's kind of like Magic playing the point. You're like, wow, this is a 6'9 point guard. Magic, you don't think Magic? Like, nah, bro, I mean, it's, Magic it's, wasn't it's like, this athletic yeah, freak. Magic wasn't doing it like, like that. You know, he wasn't this Jumpers, athletic freak. Is that, it's at LeBron yeah, the whole pack. Like, Scotty Pippen? Hell no. Nah. If you crazy? I mean, if you put them together, <laughs> if you put them together, you put Magic and you gotta Scotty put Jordan, and Penny Hardaway. No, you have to put Jordan and Magic together. And Penny Hardaway. And then Hardaway. you get LeBron. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We playing Miami. I'm like, yeah, they. I had a, a thing. If a team cut me, mm -hmm. I was gonna have a good game against them because I'm like, I'm gonna make y'all. Yeah. Make them pay. So I was playing good. Woo -woo. Then the play happened. Mm -hmm. I know where this is going to go. Then the play happened. <laughs> so Rip Hamilton. I'm like, Rip, <laughs> back screen coming. Like, get through. Uh -huh. Back screen. Like, I'm, cause you know, Tiz, we're a defensive team, so we know somebody you gotta fall back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, back team, back screen coming, back screen coming. So he don't move, he stops. So okay, of course, I got a bag book, take mm -hmm. away, you know, that. So we boom. I'm like this, I'm backing up, you know, guard you man, like I'm doing that. So I'm like, yeah, they throw the ball up. I was like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Like, Who is that for? Yeah, right, you know what I'm saying? Like, huh? <laughs> so he, you know, come over. I didn't know he jumped over me at the time. He dunked it. Boom! Coming off the Well, a real good go. Brush screen by Mario Chalmers. Picks off Hamilton, and he goes right over Lucas. I didn't even see that on the play originally. They go crazy, like, oh, man, I'm like, ah, you know what I'm saying? He said, I didn't know he duck jumped over I me. I didn't know. So my whole thing was like, oh, shit, he dunked over me. Let me go get a bucket real quick. Uh -huh. So I'm like, take the ball out. So I'm rushing down court. <laughs> Tibbs called timeout. Beep. Oof. So, <laughs> so you got to sit there. That's the worst. <laughs> so now, they like, oh, oh, like just going crazy. You know that money. You know how Miami replay, things yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, everybody got oh. played on in there. Look like you had a. So we on the bench and like. I'm like this, I'm looking at, you know, the circle thing. I was like, and like Joe Kim and Ty's, we all like, it's just quiet. <laughs> quiet yeah, yeah. Like, you know, the coaches huddle up in the middle before they come give you the game plan, mm -hmm. right? So we all look, I'm like, oh. <laughs> like this, and Joe, and like Ty's gave me this thing, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, that happened <laughs> right there. So I get back to phone, I turn both my phones. I had two phones at the time. Mm -hmm. I turned both them off. I'm like, I ain't want it from nobody. Jason Terry, good defense. Wade from behind takes it away. Chalmers, pull, James! Whoa! What do you remember about that play? What do you remember I, about that moment? I, I want to say it's a, one of the lowest moments in my career, but at the same time, I mean, I'll forever go down in history. Like, you got dunked on by the kid. Every camp, every clinic around America, I go and talk to kids. They don't ask, like, Man, how did it feel to play 19 years? How did it feel to play with Dirk or win a cha win a championship? Yeah. What how question did it feel, How did it feel for LeBron to dunk on you like that? All right, come on, man, get out of here. Was it a fast break? It was a fast break, but what happened was I was coming down, 
I turn the ball over. Okay. So it's just instinct for me when you turn it over, I got to get it back. So I'm chasing it. I mean, I might have chased their whole team and the coach trying to get the ball back. I got Chalmers coming at me and then LeBron's coming down the middle. Took my eye off LeBron for one second, chased Chalmers, turned back around, and he was already in the air. Like, <laughs> in slow motion. And what made me jump is what I'm trying to figure out. Like, you know it. Like, even if you did jump. You're not going to touch man, that, man. You ain't touching that. Oh. And I jumped, man, and he lifted me on his knee, and I was still going up with him. Like, LeBron just bang, bang, it was over. Like, I elevated, I was in the rim. Hit the ground, man. And I didn't hop up quick, I laid there for a minute. And I think that's the picture, the meme that's out. Like, I'm laying there with my arms folded. <laughs> <laughs> like me in the funeral, man. I can't front, bro. Uh, I was one of those people on social media just that wasn't dying cool. laughing at this moment. For three weeks, I was checking my phone, and people were sending me messages, man, you okay? Like, numbers I haven't <laughs> heard in, in eight years, I'm seeing numbers pop up. Jet, you are you good? You, you dead, big homie? You, you good? Like, I don't know what these people talking about. They even said in Wikipedia, they said that was my death date, and they had the date and everything on it. That's crazy, man. Michael Jordan. I don't think there could be a comparison to him, only because he's in a category far above everyone else, only because he's a mold breaker. Like, you can't, you're not going to be Muhammad Ali. You're never going to be Ali. You can be a great fighter. You can be the best at what you do. You can have a heck of a knockout punch, but you're not Ali. You're not Jordan because you can't break a ground that hadn't been broken yet. Uh, I don't see that LeBron is going to break a ground that hasn't been. You can't be magic. You're not going to be the first 6'9 guard that come into the league and change the dynamic of what a point guard is. So he will never be that. He will be a great player, but he'll never be a groundbreaker. But he's, I, I, I disagree. I mean, I, I agree that Michael is above and beyond everybody, but LeBron is breaking new ground with the way he's playing, I think. I, I don't even know what position he plays, but he can guard all five spots. He's really the point guard, but then he plays power forward sometimes. I was going to ask you, Steve. I, I mean, is this... A, Oh, sometimes you hear guys, well, he redefined the power forward position. He Charles redefined, redefined yeah, power yeah, forward. Exactly. So what has, what has LeBron redefined? Well, well, oh, let me make this. Well, I think the point that Steve was trying to make, like, if you remember last year in the playoffs, he guarded Derrick Rose. Mm -hmm. We would never let a 6'8 guy guard the MVP in, in, in our sport. I, we, I disagree. I mean, Scottie Pippen did that. Was, but, but I'm I mean, saying, but Scottie Pippen w will never play power forward. Right, but meaning, like, okay, as great as Shaq was, he, he's never, everyone always says, well, Will. Now, Shaq, greatest player we've ever seen at his position at our, as a, but he's always, because Wilt was the groundbreaker, so he never gets that, the, all the credit he probably deserved because he can't break through that Will comparison. Well, that's on the people. LeBron is. That's on fans and But I think that's what we're talking about. So I think that's the same thing with, with LeBron. He'll never be in that Michael um, category because he can never meet up to that. Maybe that's next, though. Maybe that's the next step for him. He's got to win four or five more titles, and then people will talk about him in that kind of I new role. I still think it be Kobe. Um, he's added um, the three-point threat. You know, when we came here three years ago in the first meeting, um, we, you know, we, we weren't fearful of his shot. We were fearful of his power and his penetration and his passing. But now you fear everything. And I think maybe the greatest testament to LeBron is that, you know, five years ago, he was one of the top five players of all time. Um, and f from five years ago till now, he's, it seems like he's ten times better because he's added so much skill to his game. And uh, I, I, I get asked all the time about, you know, MJ, LeBron, and, and it's such a difficult question to ask. All I know is they're the two, two best players that I've ever witnessed. Um, they're very different, but, you know, however you want to rank them, you know, they're, they're right there together. I'm shocked at LeBron that he's been able to do it for this long. Consistency, yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. and we're talking about him going to his, potentially his seventh, seventh. NBA final. Yeah. And, you know, to he's dominated this era Years. of basketball yeah. that, that he's played in. And, you know, to, to be able to do it consistently at this level in these many places, Cleveland, Miami, right. back to Cleveland, right. he's been the guy, you know, which is... 
you know, head-wise, I mean... Had to figure it out. He's got to be a basketball savant genius, just totally on another different level that, you know, arguably we haven't seen in this league. Shout to LB and your greatness, bro. You out here doing it every year. You've been consistent. He's never hurt. You never hear anything in the, in the news about him. He's a great, I mean, great humanitarian. So on and so on with the ETC when it comes to LB. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> LB starting schools. He's going 25 in the fourth against the Pistons. What else you going to do, bro? Uh, he's, he's, he's unbelievable. And I think the, you know, we've played now till May 25th and May 27th the last two years. And um, we started on September 25th. And that's every day, like every day. Um, that you're totally focused on this. And he's gone past that eight straight times. It's ridiculous. I'm, and, and does it at this level and with the pressure, with the scrutiny, doesn't matter. It's just unbelievable. Our, our goal going into the series was to make him exert as much energy as humanly possible and, um, and try to be as good as we can on everybody else who are good players. And... Uh, you know, for the most part, I thought we were pretty good at that. And, you know, multiple games now in TD Garden, held them under 100, you know, three games in the 80s. But he still scored 35. It's a joke. And the easy cut. James for three. That's good. Puts Aaron Baines in the pick and roll, and that's exactly what they do. Try another three and nails it. Markson out there right now with him. James drives on Orford, gets inside, and lays it in off the glass. Deflected, picked up by James, turns, shoots, and hits. Drives, continues off balance, banks at home. Here comes James in the open floor. James, grab from behind, count it, goal 10 and one. Mama, there goes that man. <laughs> Would LeBron get the super status of the NBA if he came into the league in the 90s? I, I, I think he's an athletic uh, Ros Oscar Robertson. If you look at that 60s era, 70s era, whatever that but was. But three inches bigger. And three inches bigger. Mm -hmm. If Then he's, uh, if you look in the 80s era, he's an athletic Magic Johnson. Uh, so then, And then in this era, he's himself. But you add the athleticism that the other guys that had the comparable skill sets had. Can we go he, to the next question? Seriously. Yeah. It's LeBron James. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the top what, five, ten players yep. of all time? Who's the player that's playing in the NBA today, Elgin Baylor, that could have held his own in the league while you were playing and with the oh, rules that no you were playing Oh, no doubt about it. LeBron James. I mean, he's like a freak of nature. I mean, this guy, man, he's built like Hercules. I mean, he's 6'8", he's and I think he weighs like 275 or 280. I mean, he should be out there playing football, too. But, I mean, he is one heck of an athlete. As far as playing basketball, you've got to enjoy this guy. If you're a basketball fan, you've got to sit back and go, wow, how did he do that? Or I always say, boy, I wish I had his speed. Yeah. You know? But some of the stuff that kid does out there, he's by far. You know, Kobe was always my favorite since, yeah. since I got out. I don't like that, by the way. But, uh, but uh, LeBron James is by far our best player in this league. I don't by think, far. I don't think there's really anyone – next to him. I think he's there, then you go down the list. Being a, a small forward, you know, understand what type of player he is. Uh, like, again, like Charles said, he's a player 6'8", 260, 270, with unbelievable speed and athleticism. You can't, where, where have you ever he, seen He that? actually could have been he better is. in IR. In the and I'll tell you something, if he ever really learns how to play on the post, and adapt that as part of his game, you think he's unstoppable now? He might have played better. He might have played better. 24. Falling away. Got it. Start looking to go now. Trying to get it in the fridge. LeBron, tough shot. No, Nothing no. Nothing too tough for the King tonight. LeBron, baseline jump shot. Gavin, another opportunity. LeBron, tough LeBron. shot. He's two or three, five points. Consecutive wins. And uh, this is something they want to hang their head on. Oh, my goodness. Minute 20 to play here in the quarter. Oh. LeBron turns, confronts two players. Reaver. You just said uh, in, listen, our era, in our era. With better players and guys. Better play players. Differently. And I think you've been posting up more. Yeah. And also because the way we filed in the 90s, right. he did develop a jump shot even quicker. All right. Yeah, unanimous yes to that. And 
Steve Kerr getting testy. And we'll be back with <laughs> a little bit more <laughs> on open court on NBA TV. <laughs> Aren't they come no, up with the right after this. LeBron would have been horrible in the <laughs> He would have sucked in the 70s. Awful. He would have been brutal in the 70s. He might not even made the team. It might have been like Darren Walker said, Tracy was all to go play for three years. Darren Walker would have cut him. Matt made a really good point, Sean. Do you think that LeBron James is still the best player in the league at 36? Uh, he's always been the best player. Uh, he's probably been the best player in the league since his third or fourth year in the league. Uh, it seems to me that, you know, the media, they like to uh, outsmart themselves and try to figure out a different MVP every year. Oh, we like this guy. This guy's had a better year, blah, blah, blah. That, that to me is kind of like the Michael Jordan effect, if you will, where uh, you know who the best player in the league is, but you want to prove that you're smarter than everybody else by uh, electing somebody else's MVP. Uh, LeBron James has been the MVP uh, basically every year he's been in the league. Uh, I know that uh, we like to compare other players to him and say this guy is good. No one in this league right now has done what he's done, uh, taking three different teams to the finals. And some of those teams, uh, the, the Cleveland team that he won with, they had no business winning the NBA Finals if it wasn't for him. So, uh, to me, he's still the undisputed king. Yeah, and you think about King James. He's played basketball so long that he actually played when Matt Bonner was playing. So, Matt, do you have any special <laughs> yeah. stories uh, going up against LeBron in your years? Oh, uh, a ton. But one that particularly sticks out in my mind was one time I was the lone person back on defense. And he was coming at me like a freight train. So, I'm like, all right. I'm just going to wrap him up and make him earn it at the free throw line. And right there, you see how strong and powerful he is. He went right through my arms and somehow finished that basket. basket. And I remember looking at Coach Pop after he hit it. And Coach Pop just looked at me and shrugged his shoulders like, hey. He's LeBron James. That's what makes him difficult to guard. Anybody else? That's LeBron James. What do you want from me? <laughs> If you could have picked any current player right now to play with for an entire season, who would you have picked? I, uh, probably Kobe, because really? the fact that he's, uh, he, well, of course he wouldn't have been shooting as much as he does now. Yeah, but, you would have had to talk his, with him. His desire to win, his the dedication in the off season to get better, um, and he's just he's just tough. He's just a tough cat. But if you want to have fun like I did with Bill Walton, you play with LeBron. Really? It'd been probably more fun to play with uh, LeBron. But if you want to win and win and win, it's Kobe. If he wants to win, he'd like to play with Kobe. If he wants to have fun, he'd like to play with you. Everyone interprets. How did you interpret? Um, well, I mean, it's simple. Kobe has five rings and I have none. Okay. So it's easy to say that. You know, if I got five rings and Kobe has none, then it'd probably be the other way around. So, you know, uh, I'm an easy target. Let's say that. Okay. If someone wants to get a point across, you just throw LeBron's name in there. You could be watching cartoons with your kids, and you don't like it, you say, blame it on LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the grocery store and they don't have the milk that you like, you say it's LeBron's fault. <laughs> I'm easy targets, and I understand that. I mean, it's not, it doesn't get to me at all. Part of this vote, or the thought process, is always what is the good story. When Charles won the MVP, when Carl Malone won an MVP, they were a fresher story than Michael Jordan. I voted for Jordan every year. Because I just thought that he is the most valuable player in the league and he's going to win a championship. And I would vote the same way with LeBron. I always looked at him. He's, he's like Jordan, that he's the most valuable person in the NBA and he's going to play for a championship. Maybe that's not you know fair to do it that way, but I didn't go out of my way to go, boy, I'm kind of bored with voting for the same guy. How right. about, I mean, Greek Freak was a great story last year. He wasn't the same story this year. I thought LeBron was a better story. That didn't mean he was the, the MVP, but I probably would have leaned that way to vote for LeBron to do what he's doing. And he completely reinvented the roster, made Anthony Davis the focal point, led the league in assist, and he did it in the Western Conference where people said, well, let's see what LeBron would do if he played in the Western Conference. So from a storyline, that was a better story than the Greek Freak. And also, Theodore, I, I think if you ask LeBron deep down, um, I, he's trying to do something that no one's ever done in the history of the game. And that's when three championships with three different organizations and winning finals MVP. No one's ever done that. Um, he's done it twice, obviously, with Miami and Cleveland, and he has a chance to do that 
with the Lakers. Obviously, he would probably be battling for that finals MVP with Anthony Davis, but he has an opportunity to do something Michael Jordan's never done, Larry Bird, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, which would be his fourth, but winning finals MVP as well. I think LeBron's at the redemptive stage. I think he's at the stage where he's put in the time. He's been proving who he was. He's been challenged by everybody. And the fact that, you know, he's stayed quiet and, and finished his goal kind of just puts him at the stage where I've done everything I've asked for, uh, that you've asked of me. Now let me have the freedom to pursue and chase the rest of these uh, championships. You know, I look at it, I think uh, he started not listening to all the critics. I think the one thing is, I think he listened to everything. I think in the finals, last, the year before against Dallas, he was up tweeting at 3 a.m., you know, talking to fans. I think he finally started to say, let me just be myself. And whatever happens, happens, wherever the chips may fall. And he started to play the game a different way. For me, seeing him post up, to me, taking a challenge of guarding fours. He didn't do that in the Dallas series. He never really guarded a dirt <clears throat> whiskey. I think now he's, he accepted the challenge right now to play center. So I think he accept now I'll do whatever it takes. I'm going to play my way. And I think that's what he did is pretty much, you know, canceled out the noise and just started to play. What's scary is what lies ahead for him. He's already won three MVPs. He's considered by all of us as the best player on the planet right now. I think his best basketball is yet to come because of that one championship. And I think that's what's scary. The best basketball for LeBron James, I believe, is ahead of him. Kind of scary, isn't it, Shaq? We haven't seen the best of LeBron James yet? It's very scary, but unfortunately for LeBron, now that the monkey is off his back, he's going to be compared to two people. That's Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. So now the question is, how many championships can he get? We all know he's a competitor, and you know he's going to be going for that five and six mark. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Steve? Well, he's the most scrutinized athlete probably in the history of the world, you know, given the amount of media these days. I thought it was just really cool watching him break through that wall, as, as Steve said. I mean, he had that, that moment this year he, where he broke through to the next level, uh, not only because he got the ring, but the manner in which he did it. The Dallas series, you know, a couple of years ago, he struggled in the finals. This time, he totally dominated. And I just think about the maturity you know, you think back to his Cleveland days, pregame warm-ups, they're doing all the camera stuff, and, you know, it was all fun. It started not being fun for him for a couple of years there. And then I think he just realized the only way that this, this is really fun at this level is to win, and, and he got it done. And that concludes the complete collection series on LeBron James. If you enjoyed this series, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you are new for a new episode, and tell me which player you would like to see next down below in the comment section. Hit that notification button so you're notified when a new episode releases, and I will catch you guys in the next video. I am out. Peace.